Hi, this is your host, Aptin Bharatiya, and welcome to TFL. Let's talk. Today, we have with us once again Alex Thornton, Executive Director of LF Energy. Alex, it's great to have you on the show again. Yeah, nice to be talking to you again. It's my pleasure. And today, we are going to talk about a new research that LF Energy sponsored software defined vertical industries transformation through open source. I would love to know a bit about this report. What is the idea behind this research, this report? And of course, we will talk about the outcome, you know, what we learned, but let's just get the idea behind this report. The main idea is trying to take the concept of open source and really make it tangible uh, for folks who work in a variety of vertical industries, whether it's energy or finance or automotive. You know, I think sometimes, especially if you're not, you know, a, a directly a technologist or a software developer, open source can be a little bit difficult to understand and and really translate to the impact that it has on your business or your sector. And really the, the high level goal of this research report is to take those open source concepts and really illustrate, hey, here's how it's impacted this specific sector. Uh, we go through a couple of different verticals to really highlight the impacts there. What are the things that were even shocking for you? Hey, these industries are either not doing it or it was like, hey, yeah, they are doing the right thing and they are on the right path. I think one of the stats uh, or one of the transformations that really was was surprising for me was telecom. And, and following the transformation that they went through with first, you know, transitioning to software defined infrastructure, you know, 10, 15 years ago, they had physical switches with big cables and, and that's all gone to software defined compute routing networking infrastructure. And open source has played a big, big role in that transformation as well to the point where uh, I may be uh, getting the stats slightly incorrect, but something like you know 70% of, of global so, uh, cell phone subscribers were using a network that was running one of the LF's open source networking projects, which is, you know, incredible impact right there. Um, and so clearly there was an understanding between the telecom operators and the technology provider providers that working together on this shared foundation allowed them all to address their needs and really move the industry forward more quickly. And if you look at what's happened with telecom over the past, you know, 10 ish years, really Innovation has really taken off between 4G, 5G, 6G. Um, it's powering very much of much of our everyday lives with wireless connectivity at this point. Can you also talk a bit about that when we look at some of these industries like telecom, you have to invest a lot of infrastructure, but moving away from black boxes, embrace open source, use software defined virtualized technologies help them move fast you know they can you know 5g 6g whatever it is how is open source helping let's say telecom or other industries to react and move faster as compared to proprietary uh, you know closed source technologies i think one of sticking with telecom a little bit you know one of the surprising uh contributing you know members as well as developers is walmart you know, I, I, you don't initially expect to see the name Walmart among Verizon and T-Mobile and Ericsson and, and all these other telecom players. But uh, when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense because Walmart is one of the world's, if not the world's largest logistics company as well. And in order for them to facilitate their logistics, they actually need wireless connectivity to track, uh, you know, all of their operations. Um, and so it's just really interesting to see how the innovation in telecom, the open source innovation in telecom is actually impacting retail and logistics, uh, especially for Walmart, for example. Of course, uh, open source dominates the world. Every company likes to talk about open source. But if I ask you, is open source a board level, a C-level discussion, or is still at a developer level? What I'm trying to understand is that where are we moving when it comes to things like open source program offices? So I'll speak more from the perspective of energy, just because that's more my domain of expertise. Um, right. So if and we've had this conversation before, right, where, you know, the energy sector is being transformed in a digital manner. Right. And I think you could say the same about many other vertical sectors that this report talks about. And as digital technology plays more and more of a role in the business strategy of these organizations, 
then open source strategy has to be a key component of that digital strategy, right? The most innovative companies in the world use open source to their own competitive advantage in order to accelerate innovation, right? So it only follows that as organizations develop more of a digital strategy, and that digital strategy is 100% happening in the boardroom, uh, then open source strategy is going to play a meaningful component there. Right, so so we do definitely see that trend of open source being elevated to more and more of a strategic and senior level uh, as it matures. I think I think it's you know started more with the traditional technology players, right? So you can think IBM, Microsoft, Google, uh, Nvidia. You know they they probably have those very very high level open source conversations, um, but other other industries that haven't historically been seen as pure tech or tech forward, banking, uh, automotive, energy, digital is going to capture more of that business and then open source is going to elevate to that strategic conversation level. Can you also talk about the role that Linux Foundation has played in making organizations comfortable with open source, how you folks have become a catalyst in the change that we are seeing today? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, our job is to provide all of the support and services for uh, our stakeholder projects and community members so that open source is successful for them. Uh, and what that looks like with organizations tends to be a little bit different, right? We kind of adapt to the needs of what an organization needs. Um, I like to think of ourselves as, as kind of like a gym, right? So, if you wanted to go get healthy, right, one option is you could go, you know, buy some running shoes, maybe get some workout equipment to put in your garage, and you can go and, and get in shape and be healthy. Uh, but it can be hard to go it alone, right? Uh, so another option is to join a gym. And there you have a community of like-minded people who also are trying to get in shape. You have, uh, you know, coaches and workout classes. You've got showers, towels, you know, maybe protein shakes, whatever, all of this support around your goal of being healthy, right? Uh, but at the end of the day, you're the one that needs to put in the reps, the exercise, you know, get on the treadmill, go to the classes. And so I think of us quite like that gym, uh, you know, we provide all of the supporting services around an organization's goals for open source. So whether that's strategic advice, you know, trying to understand the legal implications of adopting or contributing to open source, um, you know, security best practices, things along those lines, we provide all of that support so that organizations can achieve their open source goals. When we look at, I mean, not just telecom, but all these other industries, some, as you said, you know, are early stage of open source adoption. What are the risks that are run by not fully leveraging open source technologies and relying on proprietary technologies? I think some of the risks are, are fairly obvious. For example, vendor lock-in uh, is a common concern, right? So there's there's a lot of questions, especially from the procurement perspective of, you know, how, how do you uh, ensure flexibility of a solution? You keep negotiation power, you avoid lock-in with whatever solution you pr pr uh, procure. Um, you know, so that that's one of the risks. I think cybersecurity is something that's that's oftentimes in the news again in the energy sector because we're operating critical infrastructure. Security is of the utmost importance. Um, you know, and I think there there are sometimes uh, concerns around the security of black box solutions because you can't actually look inside and understand how they're made. And that's one of the benefits of open source is you can inspect every single line audit it completely. Um, that doesn't mean that it's secure by default, right? You have to follow certain best practices around security as well as supply chain security, uh, but it has the possibility of being more transparent than any black box solution. Of course, code is important, but so is standards, because standards, they kind of not only make things easier for players, but also for consumers. Of course, there are a lot of standard bodies, but can you talk about the role that open source is playing or can play in building standards, in building things that different organizations, even competitors can agree upon? And it kind of also creates a label playing field. It also democratizes things. It also kind of removes all the complexity that comes with vendor lock-in and interoperabilities. 
Yeah, standards are a great example of industry already collaborating together, right? And, and you know, you see this Society of Automotive Engineers, you see this in IEEE, IC, right? There are all these standards bodies that have been facilitating uh, collaboration for, you know, decades, if not centuries, right? And that's great. Like, this is extremely important work that has uh allowed for interoperability both technically but also economically right could you, could you imagine if we didn't have agreement on you know within the us the frequency of the electric grid or you know 120 volts for an electric outlet um so really important for us to to collaborate in that in that respect i think one of the challenges with standards is oftentimes the result of that collaboration process is a document right it's a you know Okay, this is defining how this standard is going to work. And if you're talking about digital technology, that document needs to be interpreted, right? So oftentimes there's a little bit of ambiguity in the standard. There are different flavors of interpretations that can appear. So the Im implementation is not necessarily standardized, even though it's a standard that fed into it. And then once you've interpreted it, you need to implement that, turn that deep pocket. PDF document into code, working code. Um, and so that's a shame because every organization that wants to work with the standard then needs to follow that process. And it's a lot of duplicative work, right? And so open source complements the existing standards process by taking that collaboration scope one step further. And so, yep, it's great that there's some sort of standard document that defines how systems are going to interoperate. Now take it one step further and work together on actual working reference code um, that can be used as a, really a launching board for, for innovation on top of it, right? So that's, that's one way that open source can uh, complement existing standards approaches. Uh, another way is through uh, an agile community, community specification process. So we, we have some open standards that we facilitate here at the Linux Foundation. And uh, as those mature um, and grow in impact, we work with some of the existing standards bodies such as ISO to turn those into formalized standards. And it's very much a partnership, a collaboration. Um, you know, they see us as another avenue for creating recognized global standards. Uh, and we respect the authority and credibility that they have. So it's very much a cl collaboration complement to each other. What kind of adoption or challenges in part of this adoption that you're seeing in the energy space? So in terms of adoption, um, you know, we're getting some really good traction in certain areas. So one that I would highlight, um, EV charging, right? So um, we're undergoing a major transformation into, um, you know, how our vehicles work, where, you know, five years ago, every single vehicle on the road was, you know, gasoline or diesel fueled. And now more and more electric vehicles are becoming commonplace, but actually having the charging infrastructure so that, you know, you're on the road and you could actually refill that battery is becoming more important. And it's a, it's actually a challenging interoperability problem to ensure that every car works with every charger, works with every charging network. Um, so one of our projects, Everest, uh, attempts to solve just that problem uh, of implementing all these various standards that have been defined in order to facilitate communication between the car and the charger and turning those into a shared open source uh, software project. Um, and so we've we've experienced great traction. Um, that project, I think we now have something like 75 active contributors on that. So really fantastic growth. Um, and there are really exciting announcements to come in the future about that. Um, so that's really powering our EV transition. In terms of, you know, challenges, you know, I think it's um, energy in particular is a conservative industry, uh, averse to risk, um, and for a good reason, right? Their power and utilities are tasked with keeping the lights on, making sure that everything just works, is reliable, safe, affordable. Um, and so change management is difficult. Adopting new ways of doing things is difficult. Um, and so layering on open source in addition to this digital transformation, um, you know, takes time and patience, uh, but we're working with it. Uh, we have a bunch of great champions in the power and utility sector, and we're continuing to grow our influence there. 
Alex, once again, thank you so much for taking time out today and discuss this research work uh, with us. Uh, and I look forward to chatting with you folks again. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks again, Swapnil.